Hello and welcome to module six, video two. All right, so uh, now we're going to talk about the configuration of NAT. So there are four different types. There is static, dynamic, PAT, and dynamic PAT. So we'll talk about each one and how to configure it. So the best way to do it is I wrote the notes for it for you, and this is what you need to write. So for static NAT, here are the commands. There's the first thing, just going back in here. When you go to the router, and let's say there's one guy inside one IP address that's going to one to one going to be translated. So what you're going to do is the following: you're going to say IP NAT inside source. So those are the that's when you are commanding NAT. You say IP NAT. If anybody's coming in from the inside LAN and they have this IP address, 192.168.10.24, please give them the global IP address, 209.165.201.5. So IP NAT inside, and you write the word static. That means in the NAT, in the NAT translation table, you will have a static IP address. This IP address will always be translated to this and vice versa. No one else will be given this IP address except except this inside local except this private ip and then you need to decide where is this guy 192.168.10.254 coming from where is the inside source so you need to say inside source for this picture it's serial 010 and where is the outside where is he going to leave from after you translate them in this case it's 011 in the example I gave here, you go to the interface G00, that's the LAN interface, the default gateway, and you're going to say that's where the inside is, IP net inside. And after, you, they, after they get translated, where do you send them out from? IP net outside. Is that clear? So there's always three steps. You got to tell NAT what the translation is, and then you also got to tell NAT where they are coming from, where's the inside, and where's the outside, which interfaces. Now, that's one-to-one. -one. What happens if you want to do dynamic NAT? So dynamic NAT is you need to create a list of who is allowed to get translated. So what you're going to do is you're going to create an access list. So in this case, I'm going to create an access list that's going to permit 192.168.10.0 slash 24 which is the wildcard 000 255 is four so this is, is going to permit subnet 192.168.10.0 slash 24 network all right so this is just an access list right that permits the subnet remember there is always a implicit deny at the end so now i go to net and create a pool i say ip net pool so that means IP NAT pool, and I give it a name, and I put the range of the global IP addresses that I purchased from the service provider. So I'll say IP NAT pool, and I'll call the pool NAT dash pool in capital letters. Remember, names should always be in capital. And then you put the range. When, in this case, it's 192, 165, 200, 26, all the way to 240. All right, and then you write the mask. You write the word net mask, and you this way, in, in this case, it's slash 27. All right, so once you give NAT the pool of global IP addresses, then you go to say, okay, IP NAT inside source. Now you're telling NAT when somebody comes in from the inside, sourcing, looking to get, to get on the internet, I want you to go to list number one, check them out, make sure that they have... Their source IP starts with 192.168.10. And if that's been verified, then I want you to go to the pool see, called NAD-pool and grab one IP address and give it to them. All right? If the second one, another guy comes in from this subnet, 192.168.10, and it's been verified by Access One, then you give them the next available IP address from the pool, 227, and so on till the pool is exhausted. All right, so once you've done these three steps, then you go in and you tell NAT where are they should be coming from. That subnet, 192.168.10, should be 
in the land that is directly connected to G00. That's where the IP inside is. And where do you send them after they've been translated? In this case, I'm going to send them out of serial triple zero. All right. So that's your dynamic NAT. Uh, you could do that for several one-to-one uh, -one IP addresses. But typically, I don't know. I don't, not a lot of people use this. I've seen static NATs done. And uh, let's take a look at not as much as dynamic, though. All right, let's take a look at Pat. All right, so here we go. I want you to write these down for Pat. So um, I don't have to write the notes up there. I'll just move that up. Well, you know what? Write the notes up there too. That's important because I know you probably didn't write it on the last time. Port address translation is also called NAT overload. So it maps multiple private IP addresses to a single public IPv4 address. Uh, it uses the source port number to uniquely identify a specific NAT translation. If the source is used, then starting from the beginning to the appropriate port, you know, 0 to 5, uh, 511, then 512, and blah, blah, blah. All right, so, so let's get started. So here, let me just go back to the packet just to uh, refer to... Uh, <clears throat> an illustration. Let's say the serial 001 has, yeah, I'll just make this a little bit bigger so you can see. This serial 001 has a global IP address. So when somebody comes in, in fact, I think we do have some, a better picture that we can take a look at when we're talking about. Um, this is global. Let me see. Um, hold on a second. This is dynamic. We'll talk about all of that as we move along. Here's Pat. And good. So there's a picture we can look at for Nat. All right. So you have two guys, 201. You have 10.10. .10. Where's the internal here? Okay. You got 10.10 .10 and 11.10 wants to go on the internet. So when they come in, I'm going to give him this global IP address and uh, whatever his source port number is, in this case, it's 144. I'm going to attach it right after the number 224 to get on the internet, right? And so on. So they'll be given the same IP address, to get on the internet and vice versa when they are translated, okay? So it'll be, when this guy wants to get on the internet, I'm going to give him 209-165-224. Colin, 144, and, and so on. And then when this guy wants to get out, I'm going to take 192.168.11.10. I'm going to look at his source IP address, whatever that IP address, and attach it to the 209.165.200.224. So I'm still using the serial port IP address. Okay, don't mind this explanation. This is for something else that they are describing. I'm trying to explain to you how uh, Pat works. All right, so going back on how would you um, do this? So the first thing you are going to do, let me just do it right here, um, is you create an access list of the subnet that you are going to translate, just like you did when you did it for uh, dynamic NAT. All right, this is the subnet that's going to be translated. And then you create a pool of the um, of the global IP addresses. Um, in fact, nope, you don't need a pool. You do not need a pool here. Actually, let me just cut this. And the pool is needed if you're going to do it here. Um, wait a second. Hold on, hold on. Hold on a second. There's a mistake here. This is the NAT with the pool. So IP NAT. Just give me a second. Let me fix this up. Um, ah, sorry, I had to stop the video so I can fix this. So this is the done the right way. So if you started typing, please fix this. All right, so doing PAT without a pool, just using one IP address, which is the IP address that's on the serial port. This is what you do. You create an access list of the 
that work that is supposed to be translated, then you say immediately you go to NAT and you say IP NAT inside source. If anybody's coming in from the inside looking looking for an IP address, check out list number one. Make sure that they have the source IP address starting with 192.168.10. And if that that is verified with the list, you go to the serial port, give them that IP address, and overload mean attach the source port number of the incoming packet segment to the serial global IP address and let him go. The next guy that comes in from this subnet and he's verified, I'm going to give him the same IP address of the interface and then use their source port number attached to the same IP address and then they go out and so on. So you're using really, this is the most popular because the um, you're using one global IP address and you're conserving a tremendous amount of IP addresses. But the problem with that is, of course, the delay, the amount of uh, packets or translation table that using one IP address. All right, again, you need to go to and indicate where is the inside, where they're coming from, and where they are leaving from. All right, now, now if you are going to create a pool, let's say you don't want to use the serial interface you want to get you want to use a pool of ip addresses so in this case you are going to create the list and then you create the pool the public ip addresses just like we did with dynamic nat right and then you go say and then you go tell nat ip nat inside source if anybody comes in from this network check out the list make sure they're good and if that's the case go to the pool and grab the first ip address and overload it Overloaded, you mean you stamp an IP address next to it. I mean the port number. If you do not use the word overload, in both cases, you're not using PAD. And it's going to be one-to-one. -one. It's going to be just a static NAT, right? Now, you keep using the first port number, um, and I think it's uh, 400 of them by default, and you move on to the next IP address within the pool. So you can create different, the reason for that is you want to create different um, MAC addresses, I mean, um, NAT translation pools. All right, uh, to verify, I know we talked about the ICMP v4, you can write that down. I also want you to write the commands to uh, verify NAT and PAD. Show IP translation. That's going to display all the translations that are occurring uh, when you are configuring your IP address. I'm sorry, uh, when you're configuring NAT, uh, show IP statistics will display information about the total number of action, um, active translations. You can clear the statistic. Um, the best thing to do is to do that before you actually display the statistics. So if there is any statistics prior to what you did, that's already gone. And of course, you can, all, you can always do the show, uh, the show run. That will display the net and the commands that you did to, um, to do your um, to do your net or pat translation. All right, so that's the notes, and we'll get to do this in uh, in our class activity. You'll see it happening in action. We'll do it also on the physical devices and uh, to get a better um, under, better learning of the how net works and operates in an enterprise network. All right. Um, so copy your notes and submit them and I'll see you on the next video.